living in the new earth. This piece of writing is not about getting somewhere in the future. It is about your current state of consciousness and the reality it is creating for you right now. For example, how would you feel if you never had a negative or anxious thought pass through your mind ever again? How would you feel if you knew there was nothing in the universe to worry about, that there was no threat, no danger, no difficult circumstances waiting for you around the next corner, only peace, only goodness, only total security and safety? It is your mind that determines all of these things, without exception. If our mind is completely free of negative, anxious, critical and judgmental thoughts, we simply perceive the luminous goodness of reality, completely untainted by such distorting ideas. We experience a state of undisturbed peace that arises naturally from an, un from an untroubled heart, which is no longer at the mercy of the mind's endless fears and worries, judgments and mental hostilities. Of course, we cannot deny that there is suffering and conflict in the world, but it is of paramount importance we primarily remain aware of our own state of consciousness in every moment, as this, is what, as this is what is determining whether we ourselves are also engaged in states of conflict and suffering or not. We never need to be if we are conscious of each thought that we choose to energize with our attention. If we are not alert to where our mind wanders, it will surely lead us back into states of doubt, fear, conflict and judgment, because these are the normal states of consciousness for most of the human collective. Therefore, there is a gravitational pull back towards them, created by our collective human consciousness. A world in which many, many people are experiencing such disharmonious states of consciousness is what we currently have here on Earth. However, we are not bound to be a part of it, because it is only our state of consciousness that keeps us tied to this reality. If we engage in what I call fear and conflict consciousness, meaning that we entertain fearful, judgmental or hostile thoughts, then we are literally opting in to a reality of fear and conflict. Our thoughts create this reality in our mind and consequently we attract external experiences and circumstances that match our mental picture of reality, thus manifesting what we mentally conceive People call this the law of attraction. So what happens if we do not buy into any thoughts of fear and hostility? What happens if we steadfastly stay connected to peace and trust consciousness instead? This simply means that rather than fearing for the future, for our own well-being and so on, we trust that we are safe and we do not entertain any doubts about it whatsoever. It also means that rather than judging and being critical of others, we accept and respect them, choosing to extend understanding and compassion to them instead. We wish them only peace. This is peace and trust consciousness, and the reality it creates for us is not a mental reality like before. The qualities of trust, peace and compassion are qualities of our heart, and therefore we experience the inner realm of our heart as our reality. And because we are perceiving this internally, it is simply projected out there to appear as our seemingly external reality. The reality of our heart is a reality of total security, completely free of fear in any sense of threat, free of hostility and conflict. It is a reality of total peace and also deep joy. This is the reality we were designed to experience because it is deeply harmonious by its very nature and it is completely attuned to the perfect harmony and divine beauty that exists in the rest of the universe. Negative or fearful thoughts are nothing more than a kind of interference that distorts our perception of what is ultimately real. Without them, we simply see reality as it truly is, divine, radiant, luminous, loving, conscious, intelligent and infinite. And so we come to understand that it is possible for some people to exist on this planet and experience the personal sense of hell 
created by their fears and their hostile mental attitudes. Or simultaneously, others experience the heaven created by their fully trusting and peaceful hearts. Is this then a planet of threat and danger, or is it a planet of peace and safety? Could it be both? Not for long, because this is where the new earth comes in. The new earth, a place of total peace and security, already exists. The easiest way to understand it is to imagine that it is currently overlaid upon our current earth, and at certain locations upon the planet, the veil is thin, so to speak. Therefore, at these points, an awareness of the new earth is accessible to people whose consciousness is aligned with a state of peace and fearlessness. Fear is the very last barrier to our perception of the new earth. Our fears create a reality for us which is not peaceful. Therefore, they prevent us from inhabiting a peaceful reality, which is exactly what the new earth is. So in this sense, fearlessness simply means that our heart is free of anxiety, perceiving no threat, free of insecurity, and thus totally trusting. It is this trust that makes our heart and mind truly strong, while our peacefulness ensures that we are ever gentle. We are free of self-doubt, but humble. We are meek. This is what is required of us if we wish to dwell within the new reality that awaits us. We are being asked to choose this way of being so that we can access our new home. And the door is open to all who are willing to wholeheartedly choose peace. But do not worry, because there is truly nothing to be afraid of. It is only our mind which contemplates any threat, but it need not do this. This is why it is important that we learn how to keep our mind focused on our peace through regularly practicing simple meditation. Meditation is something that everybody can do without exception because it is the simplest thing in the world. For example, if I asked you to move your attention right now away from the sound of my voice to something else, perhaps the colors you can see in the room around you or the feeling of your body sitting or standing wherever you are, you would find this very easy. Essentially, you're moving your attention from one place to another. A meditation is just the same. You are simply moving your attention away from the thoughts that pass through your mind onto something else, such as your breathing, or the physical sensations within your body, or maybe the beating of your heart. It is not so important which you choose. What is important is that you realize that you are not compelled to be in thought. It is optional. We only choose it because it is what we have grown up doing. Thus, it is a well-established habit. But because we can all recognize that thinking does not always create the peace and happiness that we want, often quite the opposite, then there is no great incentive to remain in thought. We can leave it and experience something else instead, something much more rewarding, enjoyable and nourishing. We can experience our peace. We can experience our freedom and our joy. We can experience the beauty of our heart from where love and compassion spring forth. Thinking simply keeps us stuck on a superficial level of reality, experiencing only the surface of life, rather than swimming joyfully among the warm depths of being as we are meant to. So, what will we experience when we are consciously dwelling in the new earth? Well, outwardly nothing will appear very different because it is the inner consciousness through which we perceive the world which has been transformed. It is important to remember that what we perceive as our external reality is nothing more than a projection of our internal state of consciousness. Therefore, if peace is our inner reality, it will also be perceived as an external reality, wherever we happen to be. It is important not to underestimate the power of our consciousness. It is a deeply transformative force. It can change the world that we perceive all around us. On the new earth, we will also enjoy a fully conscious relationship with our creator, with a divine intelligence which permeates the whole of creation. 
Again, it is only our fear that keeps us in a state of ignorance of the divine truth, which we are capable of experiencing wherever we are. When there is no fear of divine judgment or punishment, we willingly choose to experience conscious union with our Creator, with the Supreme Consciousness which many call God, because it is the very fabric of reality itself. It is not a separate thing. It is the essence of everything. We fully belong in conscious union with our Creator. We have just been unconsciously resisting it and trying to avoid the inevitable realization of it for so long because we were deeply convinced that it would result in pain. We had completely forgotten the unconditional and ever-forgiving love of our spiritual parent, yet we so desperately wanted to experience it within the depth of our being, so much so that we searched high and low within the dream that we called life, hoping that we would someday find the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. But like this life, the rainbow is illusory. It is only when we finally see through the veil of this seemingly finite reality that we perceive the infinite and omnipresent loving intelligence that permeates it all, the divine supreme consciousness. Seeing through the veil is like taking our attention away from the rainbow, which represents creation, and looking towards that which creates the rainbow, the sun, which represents the creator. Essentially, the rainbow is just a projection. It is comprised of light, but it is not light in its original form. It has separated itself out and thus created something undeniably beautiful. But if we are looking for the source of this beauty, we must lift our heads and see from where the light is shining. Then a purer form of light will reach our eyes and our hearts. It is important to understand that it is this pure light that creates a pure reality. Only when our mind ceases to cast shadows and it becomes fully aligned with the pure vibration and frequency of this light, which is the original essence of our consciousness, only then do we perceive this pure reality as our reality. Some might call it heaven on earth, some might call it paradise or the new earth. Names do not really matter. What truly matters is that we realize this is available to us right now, in this moment. Future is just an illusion of thought. Heaven awaits us now, behind the veil of thoughts and the doubt, disbelief and fear that cloud our perception in any given moment. We do not need to wait for a future moment to free ourselves from illusion. Each moment holds the potential for our awareness to be liberated from all distorting ideas and beliefs and to perceive the radiant beauty of the divine reality, God's reality, the promised land, the new earth. We can step out of the shadows created by thought, all thought, right now, if that is what we desire. We should not imagine what we might experience and it is wise not to expect anything. We need only to relax, to trust, and keep our mind clear of any ideas or thoughts so that we may clearly see exactly how things truly are, free of all mental distortions. If you enjoy these messages, please like, share and subscribe. Thank you.